Welcome to the last advanced SQL tutorial you will ever need to watch. Now, there are plenty of SQL tutorials that exist out there. I've made a few videos focused on advanced SQL. I've seen uh, Alex the Analyst make at least a, probably half a dozen or so, and they're all great. They're a great way to get a lot of clicks, views, and subscribers at the end of the day because you guys keep just clicking and restarting more and more SQL tutorials. Thanks. Thanks for all the love, but let's be honest, you need to focus on actually learning SQL and not just following along with us and having us show you character by character what to type when we're showing you how to create a CTE. That's honestly not a great way of learning in terms of actually learning how to work with advanced SQL concepts. These videos do provide a great basis for anyone looking to just understand the general tools that are available to them. Whether you're trying to learn about self joins, window functions, CTEs, subqueries, and all the various other ways you can kind of join and mess around with data, they all have, at least personally, one glaring issue, which is you're not actually applying this knowledge. You're merely just kind of learning about it from a very high level point of view, and you're not actually applying it to any form of data. And trust me, I've seen people who watch these types of videos all the time and still struggle to actually apply these problems because in the moment they might have understood how, again, a CTE, a subquery or something similar worked. But when you were asked to apply it, they kind of struggled in terms of like, why would they use it? What's the purpose? And how do you actually implement these advanced tools depending on the varying data sets? The thing about these tools is you don't just want to learn about them and how they work, you want to learn how to apply them, which in turn requires you to actually work on a project. And that's where this video is going. If you want to stop watching videos about advanced SQL tutorials, you need to actually start applying some of the things that you're learning on these problems that you're looking into. So this leaves one major problem, which is how do you do that without having a data set to actually apply your SQL knowledge to? I have the answer to this problem, which no one told me about the setup when I first started trying to get even more advanced in SQL and trying to apply it more. And I often had to create my own fake data sets. So you guys are very lucky because I'm going to give you the secret, the magic, the answer, which is that Google Query has public data sets. Yes, public data sets of some pretty useful topics that you can use to query and learn a lot of complex concepts without having to make fake data. Let's dive into one of these public data sets that I think would be very useful for anyone trying to become familiar with SQL. I looked through a few data sets, so I think this one was probably the most helpful. It was just the easiest, I think, to understand from a table structure standpoint. There was a few that I looked at, but I, again, I think this was the easiest, so let's dig into it. For those unfamiliar, this is BigQuery's SQL workspace. What you'll notice over here on the side is a bunch of essentially data sets that you can use for free. Again, these are all public data sets that Google BigQuery provides for pretty much anyone to use. I think one that I was originally going to try to use was the CMS data, which is basically kind of Medicare data. So there's this synthetic patient data that I thought would be interesting. But when I dug into it, it was what seemed like highly normalized and very difficult to personally understand. So I didn't think this would be a good data set for people to work with when they were first starting to try to figure out advanced SQL concepts, mostly because you'd likely get discouraged just in terms of having to kind of navigate the data set on its own. That just seemed very complex. So I tried to pick something that was a little more straightforward, which was the Stack Overflow data set. So in particular, this data set seemed to have a lot more clear joins that would be very easy for anyone who is just starting to get familiar with SQL to utilize. So for example, if we look at badges, you'll see that you know user ID is very clear there. So if we go to like, again, users, it's very clear what kind of information should exist in user. Also, I think there's some interesting, like either demographic or just in general kind of usage data like upvotes, downvotes, views, that would be really interesting, I think, to kind of glean where you have a lot of questions that you could ask just based off of user data alone. Of course, if you're really trying to learn advanced SQL, you need to start forcing yourself to find ways you can kind of join this data across different tables because that might force you to do some left joins, self joins, inner joins, and really get familiar with all of those different concepts and how they work. But overall, your focus should really be trying to create some sort of project out of this, a dashboard, some sort of analysis, something that you can kind of create, possibly write a medium article about, or again, create some sort of public uh, Tableau dashboard on, just because at the end of the day, that's really what's going to force you to learn. 
It's about getting a good data sense, which is one kind of understanding what questions you might want to ask and what questions you can ask off of a data set, as well as understanding how that data set operates in terms of the fact that do you need to do self joins or are there certain things you can do to look at events in a table, you know, versus like self joins versus lag and leads and things like that. And it's about understanding how all of these different things kind of come together on one specific data set and how you can kind of, again, start aggregating, bringing data, data to different granularities across your complex project. Another thing I really liked about this data set is it has a combination of kind of numeric data. So you saw like with users, there's views and certain things that are very numeric, as well as open text or kind of free form text fields, which means that you've got a lot of interesting information you could essentially query from this table. Again, this literally is just Stack Overflow kind of information. So you can literally see the comments that people are posting here. So you might want to like do some sort of analysis on like sentiment, right? Like you might ask questions like, you know, what, what's one question you might want to ask? Maybe you're curious about, you know, um, which language has the most positive or maybe least negative, the least negative comments, right? Like that might be something interesting looking into. So with this question, you'd likely need to probably either join comments to posts to kind of look into the sentiment of the actual comments and then check tags in posts to kind of figure out, okay, uh, based off these tags, can we kind of figure out which topic, you know, which programming language uh, is this post focused on? And then from there, kind of figure out the overall average sentiment uh, using some sort of either library, if you want to do something with Python, or maybe, you know, maybe you can do something else that's a little simpler than that. And that might be something interesting worth looking into. All right, so let's focus on how to actually learn, quote unquote, advanced SQL, which means you actually need to, again, try to figure out how to apply what you already know to some sort of final project. And in order to do so, you first need to decide what that final project is. One way I think to start that is by just doing some sort of exploratory data analysis just to start with, which again, you know, we've already got this question here, which is, you know, which language has the least negative comments. I might also look into things like what is the most common badge? What languages get the most comments? Uh, oh, this was one that I thought was interesting. Like what time of day are different types of developers active. So in, in that one, what I think is interesting here is you might want to do again, something with tags, and then you might want to figure out, you know, something with time, and then you can do some sort of analysis where it's like, hey, are Python developers more likely to be night owls? Or are they more likely to be, you know, answering questions early in the morning? So I think that's kind of interesting. Or maybe you could even track something in terms of like, location, right? Like maybe you could slice this data even further. So based off of user data, you could figure out if there are certain developers that are more active depending on where they live in the world, also based on time, also based on, you know, again, their language that they're using. So maybe there are different patterns, you know, maybe some Python developer in Australia has different patterns than people in America. So it would be interesting to see and answer all of these different questions. And then from there, once you've kind of done some sort of exploratory data analysis, you can now start to develop more of a clear, maybe dashboard or final research product. And I think that's where you should go with this because that's kind of step two, you know, do some sort of EDA, kind of define some sort of problem you'd like to focus on after you've kind of gained some sort of general understanding of the data. I think that's very important because, you know, otherwise you're just kind of guessing uh, at what you should be querying. So you can create some sort of final product where you're doing some quick charts or something, you know, even if it's in Excel or maybe in Tableau, and you could just quickly then again, do a write-up and write an article on Medium, or again, put together some sort of dashboard. But even there, I think it's valuable to do a quick write-up in terms of what your project is. So before you go too deep into any form of SQL project, you should probably spend some time writing out your general goal, what questions you want to answer, maybe some basic KPIs you want to write up and who you think would be a good general audience for your final project. Again, whatever it might be, a dashboard or some sort of uh, report or medium blog article. All of this forces you to not just learn the tools, again, by watching endless tutorials, but it also forces you to learn how to apply those tools to real problems. Again, I think this data set is kind of pretty straightforward. Uh, if you understand how Stack Overflow works, it should be pretty clear on how to join all this data together. All the naming in general is also pretty clear, right? Like user ID is very obvious where you want to join that in. Also post ID is very easy here to join in. Again, it also has a lot of kind of categorical data that you can pull in such as badges, demographic data about where people live or the languages that they're referencing. It also has a lot of freeform text, which can give you even more categorical data if you spend some time actually trying to scrape that information. Also things like links and a lot of just interesting general information. 
but don't take my word for it. You can actually find a lot of projects that people have already done on this very concept. We'll go through here a few in a second, but I just wanted to cover the fact that this is kind of a great place to start in order to improve your SQL skills because it will force you to think for yourself instead of just following along with another tutorial. So let's go over a few projects that people did just because that might be fun and interesting in sense of hopefully inspiring you to do your own SQL project. For some examples of how you can kind of show your work in terms of one, learning more advanced SQL, also to start building your portfolio in general, Felipe Hoffa does a lot of great work. In fact, both of the next projects are going to be based off of their kind of work so far. First of all, I think the one that they asked that is kind of an obvious question, which is when will Stack Overflow reply? Basically, they created a system or they created queries essentially to try to help predict how quickly people will reply to your questions, depending on what like programming language you're going to use and a few other concepts. So if you actually go into this, you'll see how there were really a lot of quote unquote advanced SQL concepts being applied. Again, everything from a uh, CTEs up here and a few other probably functions you might not have used in general. And so I think from here, you can kind of see how if you ask yourself these questions, even if it seems simplistic, you'll start to force yourself to think about how would you actually approach answering these questions using maybe some of the new tools you have, maybe because you're going to have to, maybe because you're just practicing and seeing how they work in general. But overall, this is the kind of work and this is the kind of steps you need to take in order to actually apply and learn the stuff from tutorials instead of just, again, following along with us in your tutorials. I think one thing that's important here, for example, is like, has it have you used the concept of unnest before? which if you're an analyst, you might not be accustomed to because you might not be used to using things like arrays. So when he uses this split here on tags, you're probably not even sure what is he doing here, but he's essentially creating something like an array where we later unnest it here to kind of make that data what we call kind of like tall or long, whatever you want to call it versus like flattening it and making it wide. And really you can continue to kind of scroll through his project here and just look at his overall logic and what he was thinking in terms of, you know, making these different queries, what questions he was asking himself as he was going through each of these various steps. And I think that's what's important in terms of how you kind of get more than just, again, tools, but learn how do I actually apply these tools to my problems? Again, he's doing just some pretty simplistic analysis. He asked one question, which was, you know, how long does it take for someone to answer a question on Stack Overflow based essentially on language? And then from there, he's continuing to dig into this problem more and more. So, you know, then he goes into some other concepts here and then he starts working on actually charting this information. Again, he's essentially created an entire project focused on one question and really digging into it, trying to figure out things again. Now he's doing things on time and all these different layers of questions is really what I think develops that like data sense. I've heard people use that concept before where it's like, you just have to get a sense of data, which means you need to work with it. You need to kind of slice and dice it a bit. I know that's kind of a cliche term, but it's like, you kind of need to get familiar with it. Every data set is slightly different. Even if it is kind of modeling something that you might've worked with before, there's just always like weird nuances and things you can play around with that will one, challenge you to try to figure out how to actually work with the data and write more complex SQL concepts. For example, one thing I was thinking of was like, you know, oh, well, what if you want to figure out what tags are most likely correlated with each other or most likely come up together a lot. So there's going to be some form of join there where you're going to have to bring both those tags together uh, and then just do some sort of count. Essentially, it's not very complex, but even answering that, you know, you're going to have to break down from splitting the tags. You might then have to do some sort of self join uh, just to bring every tag to its partner, essentially, right? You're going to have to join the post ID to post ID for every one of the posts so that you get every possible combination of tags. And then you want to make sure you have somehow the first one be the same as the second one or do some things. So you uh, create an equivalent, essentially combination of tags and then count from there. And so what might seem like a simple question can really be extrapolated out and have you practicing different ways to solve one problem. And from there, if you really want to take it to the next level, what you can also practice is looking at one way you've solved a problem and trying to write another query that's not necessarily using the same tools, but still solves the problem and provides the same answer. For example, when you have to use like a self join versus like a lag and lead in order to join two events together. So you can compare the like event times when they occurred. Doing that also again, forces you to figure out, oh, there are other ways I can actually write a query that will still give me the same output. And I think that teaches you a whole other set of skills in terms of being able to one, work across multiple query engines that may or may not have certain components, but also just gives you an understanding of the fact that data 
works in a lot of different ways and you can really get the same answer if you even use different tools. With that, I hope I inspired you to get away from SQL tutorials, at least if you've already done enough of them and start looking for actual projects to apply your skills on because that's really how you're going to advance your skills, focus less on tutorials after a certain point and more on actually building things. You'll still occasionally need to query things. We all do. I still query uh, things like specific date transformations all the time. That's normal, but at a certain point, you need to get away from watching tutorials and focus on building projects. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.